X crypto is for us, the DGENs. Um, looking to pump prices and call each other names. LinkedIn is the place to be. So that is where we are right now. So they posted, today we launched new pricing plans and functionality for Overledger, aimed at enterprise IT users and developers tasked by their business lines with implementing blockchain technology as part of their organization's wider digital asset strategy. And yes, that was one sentence. Ladies and gentlemen, Quamrad, welcome to episode six of the Quamfi Show. I am on my own today, solo Yarno Quamfi Show. You know what that means? It means that this episode can be either 45 minutes or three hours, um, depending on how the flow is. I am tracking time. Ironically, I have this blue envelope where I'm going to write down the timestamps and um, if everything goes well, you're going to have these neat little chapters in the bottom of your screen. I want to jump around a little bit. We got a very, very full show because Gilbert was on the Future of Finance podcast with, damn, I keep forgetting the man's name. Oh, what's his name? What's his name? What's his name? No, we'll get to that in a bit. Um, also, going to talk a little bit about my Twitter or my X game. I got the blue dick, went for the premium, decided to uh, to move on to the socials once again and, uh, and push a little bit harder there. I think um, one can use the exposure. I think there's a, a lot of you, uh, well, not necessarily you, but um, a lot of people that are uh, not well informed and I think uh, Quant can use a little bit more spotlight. I'm going to make an attempt to do my part. Also, on Warpcast, Forecast, Farcaster, it's a Web3 social media. I have a presence there as well, created a Quantfi community. There is also a link to that in the description. Would love if you guys um, also sign up there. It's not free, um, but it's not a sewer like X. So that might be interesting. Um, there's also some money to be made, but people are actually tipping there. Um, DGEN, in case you were wondering, uh, for people making uh, quality content. And that's a nice little bonus, um, especially if you realize that you're really fucking early. Yes, first curse were two minutes. YouTube's not going to get me today. So um, there's that, right? So we're going into the, the interview with Gilbert. We're going to look at X. I made a post on Japan and uh, because Ledger Insights posted something about a regional Japanese bank. So I thought that was interesting. And of course, we're diving into the new quant pricing for Quant Connect. And there's some interesting developments there. Uh, price changes. It's a lot more accessible to a lot of more companies. My thoughts on that. And what we're also going to try to do is move to my personal account we're going to try and make uh, a, a, a free trial account, right? I'm already registered there. So we're going to see what the steps are to get there, um, how easy or how difficult it is, and all that jazz. Um, so um, what was the guy's name? How do I keep forgetting? Oh, it is what it is. So, oh, by the way, Tim. Uh, why isn't Tim here? Um, Tim is away. Tim is on a oh, Tim is on holiday. I'm just my keyboard here. Tim is on holiday, and um, he's not going to be. My computer wants to reboot. Well, that's funny. Um, he's not going to be here for this episode. Obviously, it is not going to be here next week for the Dutch episode either. So the Dutch is going to have, um, me, for themselves twice because the Dutch people watch both the English and the Dutch episodes. Love you guys so so much so we're four minutes in let's kick off with my twitter game i'm gonna shrink my face a bit let's see if the thing crashes no it doesn't 
That is good. All right. So what is going on on X? I keep saying Twitter. I'm a dinosaur. Um, <laughs> so it is about the Hokoku Bank, right? Hokoku Bank launches Japan's first deposit-backed stablecoin. Today's Japanese regional bank Hokoku, Hokoku announced it is the first in Japan to launch a stablecoin backed by bank deposits. Last year, it launched the Tochituka app, which allows citizens to earn Tochipo points from the local Suzu city government and spend them at certain stores. Now, those who already have a Hokuku bank account can use the same app to top up their Tochika, the deposit-backed stablecoin, which they can spend at local stores. Japan remains a cash-centric society. The bank aims to draw in retail businesses deterred by the high costs of cashless payments by offering merchant rates of just 0.5%. It also targets companies issuing paper gift certificates, encouraging them to adopt digital app for base for point based transaction by end of year okoku bank plans to enable p2p payments through the app it also wants to attract other banks to join it within the <laughs> ishikawa prefecture i am so sorry my japanese words are uh, yeah take some practice and expansion to other regions is the ultimate goal um <clears throat> Other Japanese digital currency initiatives. Uh, in terms of stablecoins in Japan last year, new laws came into force allowing three types of stablecoins, with bank stablecoins as one of them. Typically, regulated stablecoins in other jurisdictions involve ring fencing of the reserve backing. Japan also supports this sort of digital currency as a trust-enabled stablecoin. MUFG founded the Procmet coin platform to enable multiple stablecoin issuers to launch trust type stable coins with different trust banks. In terms of deposit backing, DCJPY is a major Japanese deposit token initiative, plans to go live during the current quarter. So <clears throat> this is all going well, probably say, you know, what does that have to do with quant? Well, um, not sure obviously about this bank, right? Because that's the nature of the quant game. But I wrote this. Imagine a company with the capability to provide everything that's needed to facilitate the launch of this product. It would be so cool if they had a patent in Japan to timestamp blockchain transactions too. Now imagine they have the connections and the history of doing business there. Maybe that company even has a token that supports the tech, right? And <clears throat> I took a screenshot from Count Shield of Quant, link in description of the video or the podcast. Go check them out there. Uh, an invaluable resource, right? These guys do a lot of fucking research. Most of this is, is not mine. Other guys dug this up, so full credit to them. Um, this screenshot uh, last week, Bank of Japan announced that they will be moving on to phase two of its CBDC development in April, which includes the use of a test environment that was developed in phase one. And then we have this tweet by Gilbert Verdian. Amazing drone show at Tokyo Olympics opening ceremony. It's just like the Quant Network logo in the sky. And Gilbert responded, that's amazing. Love it. Quant will be there soon. Um, and of course, Gilbert Ferdian, we're delighted to be granted the first patent from our filings from 2017. The grant of Japanese patent 7273053 recognizes that Quant has introduced a method to agree on a universal time zone for all blockchains so that enterprises and smaller businesses can produce reliable consensus-based records. It's an innovation to make blockchains seamless and easy to integrate into business and financial applications without the need for complex infrastructure. <clears throat> so, Japan. Japan is a thing. Japan has been a thing for 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 a good while. Um, when I got with making a note with the quant community back in twenty twenty, um, I believe there was already some rumors whispering going on 
Um, and I think Japan was always on the list to be targeted pretty early on. Um, Bank of Japan is like uh, an unconfirmed known, right? Uh, you saw the messages by Gilbert. Um, there's other research also found in Count Shill, um that makes a lot of sense when it comes to, to matching the quant tech um, to what they are trying to achieve. Um, so are they connected with the bank in the ledger article? We don't know. But how it goes with government and businesses and such, everybody's in contact with everybody. Example, Project Rosalind. Everybody knows about that. Everybody talks about it. Everybody's quoting it. Um, so, so, so why not in this case, right? It's pure speculation in terms of this bank. Bank of Japan seems a lot more likely. Um, super interesting stuff. Follow me on X, right? Follow me on X. Follow the Quanfi Show at the Quanfi Show on X. Um, love to see you there. Shameless plug. You're gonna get a lot of those. I need. I need to practice. So then we will be moving on to the interview that I was alluding um, to earlier. Let me see timestamp. Ten forty. Let's go. So the interview. So how to make digital asset markets grow and what can governments do to encourage the growth of digital asset markets? Um, this is nice. I listened it on Spotify and it is on YouTube, as you can see. I'll put the links to everything in the description. What I found most interesting was the last bit of this interview. I'm, I'm not going to run the interview right now. Um, time constraints, I'm going to be talking a lot either way. Um, but I believe from 17 minute 30, Gilbert goes into how TCP IP was introduced in the UK. This entire episode, by the way, is about regulation um, to an extent and, 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 and the implementation and how um, governments could work with the new tech and how it will be implemented and so on. In the last part, um, Gilbert goes into the, the protocol wars back in the 1980s, 1983, I believe. Um, there were all these ideas for what the internet should look like and how that should work. And then Gilbert um, explained that the Department of Defense actually um, made the decision and just went with TCP IP and told everybody, okay, so this is what we're going to be using. And you either jump on board or you get left behind. And everybody that wants to be on board needs to be onboarded by January 1st, 1983. Boom. That was it. After that moment, every single business that wanted to do business within the UK and with the UK government in, in specific, specifically needed to be on the TCP IP protocol. I'm not going to pretend to understand the depth and the the tech behind it, um, you guys know that's not my my forte. But it is a very interesting precedent because the internet changed everything, right? In the 90s, as you know, right? We're talking right now through the fucking internet. Um, but when I grew up, <laughs> there was no internet. We had to go to the library to, to, to rent a book or to, uh, to rent a video. Uh, but but that all changed and it changed a little bit earlier for part of the defense governments etc because they were obviously on the bleeding edge of technology uh, right There's certain parts of it um, now governments are generally lagging because technology just moves so fast and there's just no fucking way that you can keep up right so you need to make jumps with your tech stack 
Um, you cannot get a new monitor whenever there's a new monitor or, or get the latest processor when because the costs will just go out of control. But like every so many years, there's like this big paradigm shift. And in the 1980s, that was the internet. And that was so important, so critical that they decided top down for the entire government, all right, motherfuckers, this is what we're going to use. And it's going to be TCP IP. And if I'm having my facts straight, that is the same idea protocol that was introduced by MIT, right? Um, Massachusetts Institute for Technology choked on that. Um, interview. Tim, where are you? Timestamps. So MIT, they created the current internet, right? Started with uh, with, with ARPANET um, and that evolved, right? Got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, bigger. Eventually had all these silos and then everybody went with TCP IP and everything just kind of lined up in a way. But then you had all these different providers still, right? So everybody had their own um, internet host and it wasn't interoperable. And then they, they shifted again. With finance right now, um, we need to move on from fax or, or texting to something more resilient, right? Something more suitable for transferring value. I'm getting back to the interview in a bit. So what needs to be done is the internet is not safe, right? That's why I'm now connected with a VPN. I have a VPN on my phone. You should have a fucking VPN as well. It's unfortunate that my missus doesn't use a VPN for some reason. Um, but you have to, because if you don't, everybody can just cut in on the connection and see whatever you're sending and, heaven forbid, manipulate the data, right? So that's why uh, Swift still has the monopoly on their payment thing, right? That's more or less protected. Don't ask me for the details. Um, but it's a problem because settlement times are fucking long and money is on hold for a long time everywhere. All your payments that you're doing, if you're from a more or less developed country, I can now, I gave this example before, I can now send money to Tim or to my, to my wife and, and the money will be there the, the same time when I push the button, right? It's instant. But there's no money going from left to right. There's no value being transferred at all. I mean, the value is transferred, but no money. So that means that there are still times when they settle the money, right? And the reason for that is, is you cannot send money real time from A to B because then there will be money trucks driving around the city all the fucking time and there will still be a delay. So stuff needs to change. And the current internet is, is just not, not equipped for this because of reasons I stated earlier. So there's this new protocol that's coming up. It's called SATP, right? The Secure Asset Transfer Protocol. Some of you guys may notice it as ODAP, um, Open Digital Asset Protocol. Man, that's a long, long time ago. Um, but that is also made by MIT. And of course, Quant, right? Martin Hargreaves is on there. Luke Riley is on there. And obviously from MIT, we have Thomas Arjono. Um, that technology, if it becomes the, the one, could very well, as Gilbert stated in the, no, Gilbert did not state in the interview, Gilbert stated in the interview that TCPFP got forced top down into the entire UK government, right? That's a precedent. Happened before, could technically happen again because they have the power. It's a good thing in this case. So if SAP is usable, safe, equitable, and it is decided that it will be adopted by UK government, which I say is not unlikely. Same goes for the United States because MIT is a United States uh, of America university. I'd say there's a good chance that set P could be determined 
to become the new internet of value, right? And that would be amazing, right? Keep in mind that set P is a protocol, right? It's it's a layer on the internet. It's, it's a different way of communicating over the same internet that we have right now. It uses a gateway model. I'm not gonna go into the tech really deep, but gateways are interesting for us because Gilbert has been creating gateways and his entire overledger platform, overledger network based on this idea. And he's been whispering in everybody's ears for well, at least 10 years that this is the way. And my conviction is that when set P comes up, that our gateways, the remote connected gateways by Quant, will be the first to be used. Because why wouldn't Gilbert deploy his own gateways first? W would he be a gentleman? Like, ah, uh, no, we'll, we'll, we'll just have Chainlink have the first gateways. It's not going to happen, right? It's not going to happen. Um, he, he created everything from the get-go based on gateway-to-gateway -gateway communication and the protocols in between. Encryption here, decryption there. Yeah, left hand moved, right hand moved. And in between, nobody knows because the left hand and the right hand are the only ones with the key and you can decentralize and overlay your network. So gateway A to gateway B can be sent through 10 different gateways. And if all 10 gateways produce the same info to gateway B, right? that's the consensus thing, decentralization, yada, yada, yada. And that's how we could technically make money because all the gateways in between A and B, they're just relaying a message. And there's no fucking way that you can decrypt, modify whatever is being sent. So I'm also still a believer that community gateways, enterprise gateways could be one. I lack the technological know-how to explain how and why. Um, so, so take my conclusion with a grain of salt. And that's the Quanfi show for you. Disclaimers, where disclaimers are due, not here to fucking spread nonsense. Um, so this interview goes into regulations, goes into how companies think, how governments think, what is possible and, and what is not. And I highly recommend playing this. Um, if your English is average, you can play it at 1.5 speed. If your English is really good, you can play it at 2x. Um, I highly recommend, highly recommend. Timestamp, 22 minutes and 15 seconds. Okay. So, um, before we move on to the next bit, um, did I miss anything? I think I did not. Let's have a real quick look at the markets. And then we're going to have some fun with the new update. So, uh, what are we looking at here? We're looking at Ethereum. Ethereum is down 6% on the day. Um, let's uh, move to the main screen. Let's see what Bitcoin's doing. Bitcoin down 5%. Probably a lick hunt, right? Looking for uh, for long, shorts, liquidity, blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of doom and gloomers. Talking about uh, crash, Armageddon, you know, all that stuff. Oh, I love my aluminium in the in the kitchen. Should have put an aluminium hat on. Um, to me, I am a master of TA. You guys know that. Looks like uh, we broke the downtrend, right? So we draw a line so, down. And we go through the 24 hours. We're about to break out. I don't know. Um, but to me, it's looking good. Volume is rising. We'll see how it goes. So we're at 61,000 euros right now. 1.2 trillion market cap, which is uh, nice, is nice, um, right? Um, on the 30-day, Bitcoin up 6%, Ethereum down 5%, um, BNB up 36%. On the 30-day, 
Um, so XRP still 55 cents. Motherfuckers keep just releasing coins. Market cap right now, 55 billion. Uh, Dogecoin, 17 cents. Then moving down. Polygon. Trades at 84 cents euro right now. And we're going down, 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 down. Down, 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 ah, all the way to 67. And here we have our good old quant. What's quant gonna do? Well, quant's the fucking savior. You can't see it in the price, but it is. <clears throat> the downtrend is there. Seven days in a row, we went from 130 euros back to 110. Yeah, guys, you need to drink in between. Usually, sometimes Tim says something, and then I can have a little sip of tea. But right now, you can enjoy my tea with me. Um, so yeah, this is a little bit of chop. So technically, we're ranging. <laughs> We've been ranging for fucking eight hundred days, more or less. We look on the year, right? A year ago, April fifth, we were one hundred and twelve. We're at one hundred and ten now. Um, trend is up. Well, yeah, we'll uh, we'll see how it goes. Um. On the regular chart, this looks like a giant bull flag to me. If we move it to log, everything is Gucci, right? Just ranging. Um, <clears throat> but yes, uh, Quan market cap 1.6 billion right now. And that's pos position 67, which is interesting because there's no position 68 on this chart. Oh, huh, it's here. Okay. <laughs> So if you look on the screen right now, it's going position 65, 68, 66, 67, 69. Okay, 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 okay. Some uh, artistic liberties taken here. Um, if we look at market caps, you can see a, a, a big shift in what's going on, right? So market cap 2.5 billion is now position 50. Market cap of position 30 is 4 billion, right? 4 billion, position 30. Position 20 is 8 billion already, right? So looking at that um, and looking at what projects are here, right, in the top 50, um, one can move up a bit, I think. <laughs> Um, it's 10 billion for top 15. Used to be top 10 a couple of weeks back. Um, so this is all just chugging along. And um, yeah, we have interesting times ahead. Making a note. People ask me, where will price go short term? And I have no clue. Ever since 2021, I am very reluctant to go into price on the short to medium term. Why? Because at the drop of a hat, everything can change. It takes literally nothing to dump markets. It takes nothing to pump markets. But the trend remains the same, right? So if we look at 2027 and beyond, um, I, th I think it's it's safer to uh, make estimations. The top for Bitcoin in 2021, which arguably was a shortcut bull run, was about 1 trillion market cap. Right now, it is already at 1.2, and we haven't had the halving. The halving. Why do I keep saying halving? I don't know. Bitcoin can possibly hypothetically go like up to five trillion maybe this cycle i don't know people do crazy shit we have until 2030 at least one more bull run so 5x 5x right let's say it goes to three let's say it's a 3x for uh bitcoin's last all-time high I think that's what it did compared to the one before that. If that repeats itself, 
right? Uh, you, you'll be on a nine trillion market cap for Bitcoin. What will the entire market cap for for crypto be? Will be a lot higher. I heard Rule Pell even say that it could go well up to a hundred trillion in total by twenty thirty. That's what I base my one trillion on, more or less, like one percent of domination for quant in 2030 should be reasonable, right? Right now, quant domination, not sure if they even show that still. Does it show that? Used to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, I don't know where to find it anymore. But there was a way to see how much percent. I mean, you could technically still calculate, right? Market cap 1.6 billion, total market cap 2.4 trillion. So, so, so was that like? like less than a half percent. Something like that, 0.5 percent. So a 2x from here for quant and then indexed with Bitcoin. So that's what a half percent of then the total market cap. God knows, probably would be 50. Um, then, then, then quant will still be 500 billion or something like that which is decent. This is all just pulled out of my ass. Um, all right, so enough bullshit of speculation. Um, let's move on 31 minutes to the piece de resistance. Oh, this is the wrong one. Oh no, what I do. Let me look. Why isn't this where I put it? Oh, right, I have it here. I was in the wrong tab. I had the tab from last week up still, apparently. I can't remember if I wanted to say anything about that. Oh. Yeah, so we have LinkedIn, right? A couple of people are crying. Oh, Quant on X is a graveyard. And that is true. Because up until now, their customers are not there, right? Big businesses, um, banks, governments, they are not looking for uh, partners or technology solutions on X. X crypto is for us, the DGENs um, looking to pump prices and call each other names. LinkedIn is the place to be. So that is where we are right now. So they posted, today we launched new pricing plans and functionality for Overledger, aimed at enterprise IT users and developers tasked by their business lines with implementing blockchain technology as part of their organization's wider digital asset strategy. And yes, that was one sentence. Quote, we believe that anyone who wants to build a business in the blockchain economy should be able to do so using technology that has been tried and tested in the most demanding of use cases. Regulated financial services, says Gilbert Ferdian, our founder and CEO. Learn more, blah, blah, blah. Quant enriches overledger for enterprise IT and development. April 2nd, 2024. Quant enriches Overledger for Enterprise IT and Developers by Solana Justus. Today, we launched new pricing plans and functionality for Overledger aimed at enterprise IT users and developers tasked by the business lines with implementing blockchain technology as part of their organization's wider digital asset strategy. The Overledger blockchain platform updates are designed to empower enterprise project teams, architects, and developers from any sector or size to test, build, and deploy on the same interoperable distributed ledger technology already trusted by banks, commercial banks, and large corporates to accelerate the digital asset strategy. That was two sentences. You notice I'm getting the cadence. 
<laughs> better. Right. So for the first time, Overledger is now available via a fully functional time unlimited free plan to allow institutions to easily adopt technology, which is rapidly growing in adoption while creating new revenue streams, making complex workflows more efficient, reducing legacy costs, and enabling access to new markets and clients. The new plan is the most powerful free blockchain plan available for any enterprise looking to execute their digital asset strategy. It enables IT end users and developers to fully test their concepts, build business applications, connect their existing systems, and tokenize, then launch interoperable digital assets of any type. For those that want to start deploying on a mainnet blockchain or run more complex proofs of concept or projects with multiple counterparties and networks, Overledger offers two new self-serve software as a service plans for $179 and $379 per month, respectively. These new Overledger plans, unlike blockchain infrastructure products that are aimed solely for node hosting or silo D app development, aren't capable of serving regulated financial institutions and central banks, provide limited functionality and charge by transaction or volume, are available for just a flat monthly fee, given customers clarity on their costs and IT budgets. Quote, we believe that anyone who wants to build a business in the blockchain economy should be able to do so using technology that has been tried and tested in the most demanding of use cases. Regulated financial services, says Gilbert Verdian, founder and CEO. That's why these new plans and features meet the demands of IT decision makers. They're an accelerated go-to-market for enterprise IT and developers to choose the best technology and delivery solution for their business lines at speed, using the same grown-up tech already used by institutions like central banks and their commercial counterparts, securities issuers, and asset managers. Natasha Boyton West, head of product, says, until now, businesses have struggled to capitalize on the benefits of blockchain because it's a complex technology requiring specialist skills and different blockchains are not interoperable with one another. Overledger changes all that. It's easy to use, continually enhanced, and integrates seamlessly with your existing systems and new networks alike. That's how it makes blockchain simple, trusted, and future. Before we move on, let's, let's digest this first bit because what is really interesting <clears throat> is that they changed what they had significantly in my book, right? So if we go back uh, about a year and a half, yeah, I think it's a year and a half already, when they introduced uh, Quant Connect, the pricing plans were intimidating, <laughs> right? The, the starting plan, was 10k something like that um it was simply not obtainable for small and middle-sized businesses they were obviously focused on enterprise and um if you want to get your name or your brand out there but you don't want to attract too many customers because scaling could be an issue then putting a 10k price tag on something um <laughs> could be a good idea. I'm not sure if they had that in mind, um, but still. That was a major, major price increase compared to the price that I paid for my gateway way back in the day. I paid one QT. Yeah, the price was 100 pounds for one year, and then you had a basic developer license. With the pricing that we had prior to this, practically nobody got on board and you can blame them. So what we're seeing now is prices of 179 to $379 per month, right? So that's 150, 350 pounds or euros, more or less. But these are monthly prices. The other ones were always per year. So this is interesting um, because this makes barrier to entry lower um, because the prices are lower and you pay per month. Price for a year is, is still under 5,000 um, 
for you and I, that's a lot of money. I just assume. I mean, for me, it would be a lot of money. For running a gateway, it would arguably be a lot of money, especially at this stage. But if you're a business, um, sorry, guys. But if you're a business and you have in some way, shape, or form connection to blockchain or DLT, 5K is not a lot of money. And especially if it's a solution that is very low code, plug and play. And we're going to look at that in a bit. We go to the dashboard. 5K is a joke. Any company can pay 5K, and that's the, the most expensive plan, right? Around it, 5K for a year, and then you have full over ledger certified blockchain interoperability, DLT interoperability. That's a very good fucking deal. And it's monthly. There's a very uh, attractive free plan. So, so this looks really, really, really competitive, really, really good, especially since the tech that is being made available here is the same as used with Brunch Rosalind. So I'm really curious to see where this will go. So let's move on a bit. So. As before, bespoke enterprise plans backed by comprehensive service level agreements, dedicated infrastructure, and all the specialist expertise of the quant team are also available for clients that are ready to put their blockchain solutions into mainstream production. Overledger now comes with powerful new enhancements across the board, including blockchain as a service, smart contract API, transaction signing, and agents. So, Blockchain as a service, that's new. Quant is not a blockchain, never was, and maybe never will be. But we speculated on the Quant show in season one that it would, could, would be, could be, should be really fucking clever if they provide an all in one package, right? So let's say we want to take the Quant for show online uh, and, and, and throw it on the Web3. And we want to connect with all these businesses to God knows what promote our videos or something. What blockchain are you going to choose? What are you what are you going to do if you have no idea what is going on? Are you going to hire somebody? I mean, a good blockchain dev is expensive, right? Not talking about the cunts jumping in our chats. No. If that's you, shame on you. Stop doing that. Nobody's going to hire you. And the people that are going to hire you, you don't want to work for them either way. So have some self-respect, whatever. Um, so blockchain as a service. Quant providing this, I believe it's Hyperledger Bisu. Check Council. Um, that's really nice. A simple way for users to run their own dedicated blockchain testing environment with complete security and privacy. Not really sure if this is also in production, but I think going from testnet to production um, shouldn't be that difficult. But I'm no programmer. Correct me in the comments. Um, so this is clever. This is nice. This is a one-stop shop offer that they're offering right now. Right? Smart contract API. No longer limited to quant provided smart contracts. Users can now launch any smart contract on any chain with ease, right? So no code, smart contracts. Just type in what you want and, and it will it gets produced. That's what I'm reading here. Transaction signing. There's no need to set up key management solutions to sign test transactions. It's now built in at the platform level, right? This is um, authorized, I think. Get into that in a bit as well. Um, beautiful, right? They've been building up the tech stack for the last two years. Quote unquote, small updates. Um, but we saw what was going on. Look at our, our, our video history. And then we have dev agents, right? Zapier and Make integrations are available for Overledger, enabling powerful code-free automation. 
with any blockchain, right? So this is the future. This is the future providing solutions that plug into other people's shit and make their shit easy, right? Let other people do, do all the battling for the transactions per second, yada, yada, yada. You just grab Overledger and you can connect to anything. If something becomes obsolete, you pick your shop up, you connect it to something else and you could go. Wonderful. So, um, let's close this screen. Let's see if I'm still logged in on my dashboard. Okay. So, 44 minutes dashboard. Let's go. Share a screen. Okay, so my name is Hendrik Jarno. Nice to meet you. I really like that it didn't put a last name in here. I wonder if that's by design. Um, so what we have here is connect.quant.network slash dashboard. Um, my plan is start. Days in plan one. Okay, apparently I sort of started that already. We'll see in a sec. So we have dashboard here. They have Overledger Authorize, um, Central Bank Rate Management and Transaction Signing for Blockchain, Authorization into any blockchain. Instead of relying on SDKs, developers can connect to Authorize, request keys, transactions via their rails, secure and seamless key and transaction authorization, and key management via proof of orchestration, taking the burden away, transition initiator, blah, blah, blah. Overledger flows, token flow, use our token flow to easily configure and deploy chain agnostic smart tokens that address your business needs. No coding is needed. Start by choosing your use case and learning more about the suitable quant smart token for your project, then deploy under three minutes. Bridge flow, right? I'm going to the features now on the left side of the screen. Use our bridge flow to easily configure and deploy smart token bridges between two networks to meet your business needs. No coding needed. Start by choosing yada, yada, yada. Here, you can make your own applications. To enable your applications to work with Overledger APIs, you need to obtain authentication details by registering them here. You can only register applications for the networks configured in your plan. And you got your networks that you can add here. And then here's a ton of documentation, the Quant Developer Hub. Right, that's for a different show. Um, so let's go back to dashboard. All right, we see start here. I'm gonna click upgrade. Let's see where that takes me. All right, so you have the deploy plan, the start plan and the skill plan. The deploy is popular, obviously. That's always the same, I think that's so cringe. Um, and the price is 179 dollars a month or we click here on the q and t and you can pay 1.5 q and t and it's interesting because this afternoon it was 1.49 so this is dynamic right so the usd price is tied to the q and t price um and you have scale multiple systems get everything deployed plus five public mainnets 50 token deployments five public mainnets of your choice that's interesting. Would that mean that they have grown beyond like the eight that we knew of? This is now really unlimited. Hmm. 20 bridge deployments, you get 50 token deployments for 3.16 QNT a month, up to 20 Tesla transaction, signing keys, smart contract deployer, discounts on audits. Right, so audits, smart contract audits are not included. That's those are separate payments, right? That was the consultancy FUD from a couple of months ago. <clears throat> and this gives you uh, access to authorize blockchain as a service and service level agreements. Okay, that's nice. That's nice. So the biggest plan is like pretty much as, as good as it gets without getting to the bespoke ones. Um, I'll just go with start if I can. Oh, I have start already. Oh. I thought I could go through a process. Okay, that was easier than I thought. Overledger pricing. Okay. So what we're seeing now, 
explore, build, integrate, and scale as you as you need with Overledger platforms, flexible plans. So this is the same as we just saw. And for enterprise, you can get dedicated support, dedicated Overledger instance, IP whitelisting, access to authorized volume discounts and more. With Overledger platform, you get to build the future of financial services in minutes. Ah, oh, you got the nice comparison thing with the dots and stuff. Beautiful. This is also cool. Book a meeting to discuss your bespoke plan questions. Okay. So that's disappointing. I thought we could actually go through some shit here. Let's see. Start. Upgrade. Okay. I can't do anything. Okay. Well, uh, should have done my homework. But that's not going to work. Um. So, yeah. Well, that's it for this then. Because I'm not going to be wasting your time by watching me fumble through whatever. Um, my networks start available testnet to Avalanche Fuji and Polygon Mumbai are available. So yeah, um, okay. Well, that's a little bit disappointing. Welcome to the Comfy Show. Um, <laughs> I, I, I really hoped that I still was on the old plan and I could go through a setup to get the new thing, but no such luck. Okay. Um, well, I think we are then at the end of this show. That was a little bit disappointing, actually. I thought there was more. Um, but yeah, to, to cut everything short, I feel that everything is more and more ramping up to be released to the public. I think the solution that you see right now, they... Think of the top-down thing, right? Like a funnel, you throw everything in the top and it goes to the bottom, it goes smaller and smaller. At the top, you have governments, banks, big enterprises, right? Fortune 500. And then you go to the medium business, small business. You need every layer. If you go bottom up, it's going to take a long fucking time because of trust and because of power, and because of money. But if you go from the top down, that's not really a problem, is it? So... They've proven the tech with the Bank of England, Bank for International Settlements. And now it is time for the smaller banks, right? When I say smaller banks, I'm thinking of ING, uh, Rabobank. Um, I don't know all the banks you guys have all over the world. I'm very sorry. Um, to start implementing and um, maybe connect smaller regional banks, maybe connect... Um, I don't know, grocery stores or smaller businesses um, if they want to uh, use maybe tokens, crypto. Um, that that would be the way to go. And then these new, uh, oh man, lost words. These new tiers um, could be very, very useful, right? So now we have tied this entire episode together. Right? So we have the regulation, and the regulators and how they can possibly implement uh, things like set P, right? Set P, get with the gateway. Um, that will be the internet. Then you have like all the stores connected to the internet. Um, Zapier, make. Um, and then your business connected through Overledger, through Zapier, through set P, and you can do your business safely and transact value without risk of losing your shit. And a good example for this might be a small Japanese bank <laughs> that uh, Hokoku Bank that can now create their own token and save a ton of money of money with settlement, etc. because it is now all instant and they don't need expensive developers because everything is handled by quant and by simple APIs. 
I think we are there. Comrades, thank you for sitting with me for nearly an hour. I have a very, very dry throat. Love doing this. Thank you so, so much. Help me out. Help me out. Help a comrade out. Give us a like. Give us a share. Put a poo emoji in the comments. Follow our socials. Stay up to date. Get your ass on Farcaster so I can tip you DGen some DGen. And yes, that is real money. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Love you guys and girls. We'll see you on the next episode.